The nonprofit group Providence Speech and Hearing Center is celebrating 45 years of helping make improvements to the lives of people with speech and hearing difficulties. Joining us to talk about the center and events they have on the horizon, we welcome the center's CEO, Linda Smith, along with their director of audiology, Dr. Katie Sullivan. Nice to have you both with us. Thank you so much for having us. For those that may be unaware, what is Speech Providence? Speech and Hearing Center. Mm -hmm. Our mission is to enrich life through the gifts of speech and hearing. What we actually do is we provide speech and hearing, occupational therapy, and we have a preschool. And last year, few people know this, but we saw over 30,000 patients. Oh, wow. You're kidding. Yes. So in the 45 years, we've seen 750,000 people in Orange County to help them with their communication issues. Katie, how are you involved and what, what is your role? I'm the director of audiology. I'm proud to say that I've been there for 12 years now. Mm. I diagnose and treat hearing loss from infants all the way up to the elderly that need some help with their hearing loss. We uh, service many infants in Orange County mm. and we do the testing and then the treatment afterwards. Talk about treating an infant. How, how difficult mm. is that? It is quite a challenge, yes. We do what's called an auditory brainstem response evaluation and we check to see how well their brain is listening to the sounds. So we connect them with electrodes and make sure that their brain is responding to the different sound levels that we give in the earphones. Mm. From that information, we see if their brain is hearing normally, and if they're not, then that's when we go ahead and treat them with the hearing aids. Mm. This is a wonderful opportunity for mm. folks to find out more about your organization. Talk about May because there's something very yes. special about the entire month. You are right. May is actually Better Hearing and Speech Month and we're celebrating the whole month at Providence. So the week of uh, May 11th we're actually having free hearing screenings and listening screenings. So if you need a hearing aid you can actually have one on and listen with it to see if it does improve your hearing which we know it does. Mm -hmm. uh, the second week we're doing voice screenings and the third week we're offering a, a tour of our preschool. Our preschool is geared towards children with speech and language delays so we really want the community to know about that as well. How do, how do folks really get involved with the organization? There's, you know there's a number of ways that they can get involved certainly through our website, through donations, through volunteering. Uh, we have an, uh, an event coming in June, our golf tournament, so looking for players, donations, auction items, and volunteers. We need a lot of volunteers as well to staff the event. Katie, how are folks uh, referred to you normally? Typically through their physician. If they have any trouble hearing or communicating with their family or friends, they would ask their physician for a referral to Providence Speech and Hearing. Um, some, their families refer them in and they're tired of the TV being too loud or misunderstanding what is being said. And so by word of mouth and programs such as this, we can get the word out that Providence is the place to go. What about teenagers and young adults? Are you seeing a lot more hearing mm -hmm. problems, hearing loss mm -hmm. because of iPods and that type of thing? Absolutely. That's a great mm -hmm. question. Yes, the incidence of noise-induced hearing loss is on the rise. The iPods need to be worn at a very safe level. We actually provide custom iPod ear adapters, oh, okay. so you can wear them and um, make it a comfortable fit. Mm -hmm. You still need to turn it down. Right. Um, very safe levels of listening are very important. Is it better? One, one, one more question about the iPod. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. always curious. Is it better sure. to have the earphones that are on the outside of the ear rather than the the buds that go in the ear, or does it not matter? It doesn't matter. What matters is the safe level of hearing. If your a spouse or a family member can hear it and it's deeply inserted in your ear, then it's too loud. Right. It's got to be turned down. Okay. Now, you guys, uh, you, you operate with the board of directors and all. How are you generally funded? Well, we actually have a fee for service uh, revenue stream. So, about 90% of our expenses are covered by billing different programs, predominantly state funded programs. And we all know with the state situation, we've seen that certainly decrease. And as the only nonprofit that does speech and hearing and occupational therapy, we're the only center really in Orange County that can accept those patients. Mm -hmm. And then the additional 10% is made up through fundraising. Because I have, I have friends been around your organization for years and years and years. Stan Plowski, yes. wonderful, he and Teresa, and I know he's, uh, he's very supportive, and you guys have several events that he gets in, involved in. He's one mm -hmm. of our biggest advocates, yes. Yeah. We have the website up. Folks can call and get a lot thank more you. information, and uh, we, we thank you very much. Thanks I know for having that us. More than, yes, more than ever, you. you're needed. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Right. Thank you both.